Okay, so this is my second YouTube video I'm making because after just a you know a ton of comments coming in um, on different things, a lot of them were very supportive and not thank you very much for your kind words and for supporting Simon and supporting you know everyone who who depends on him. Um, I wanted to make another YouTube video because <laughs> some of the comments I'm getting from people are uh, similar. They're not the same comments or questions, but they're very similar in nature. And so I thought it would be best if I just maybe instead of trying to answer them all, especially because some of these people are being unreasonable, um, crude, swearing, saying bad things. And I think these people are very confused as to what... Um, well, I just think they're confused <laughs> uh, about maybe their their own, you know, their selves. Because um, they keep going through me and what I'm saying um, and questioning Simon. And I didn't, I'm not, I don't speak for Simon Parks at all. I haven't spoken to him in quite a while, actually. And um, I don't uh, have any sort of access to him and I don't you know I don't know what goes on in his brain I don't know why he does what he does all I've given you in my first video was just my my experience was just relaying to you this is what I experienced and my opinion about how I feel about him that's that's it there's nothing more so uh what I'm going to tell you now is this is like a group answer to you know, people almost being, you know, saying they feel so sorry for me and I'm this victim and that, you know, Simon doesn't have any right to be doing what he's doing because he doesn't have a license and he's not, um, he, he's not trained <laughs> and all these things to help people and to be doing what he's doing. Um, first of all, I just have to say that uh, I I didn't really give very much information in my first video because of trying to protect myself and people I care about. Um, but I feel really strongly about this and I, I'm just going to give you a little bit more information about my story or about what I, what was going on with me and why I needed to seek out help to begin with. Um, anyone who who, uh, you know, has been through this and anything similar to what I've been through. Um, MK Ultra mind control, um, satanic ritual abuse, um, possession by possibly a djinn or just one of my bad personalities, <laughs> I guess of which I have several. Um, now, like some people say that that's, that's ridiculous. MK Ultra doesn't exist. Um, satanic ritual abuse, there was this, you know, bunch of accusations that came out sometime in the 80s, and then there was um, a counter um, uh, movement that uh, promoted that it was a, a was a scam, that it was like a hype, like that people were just creating this in their own brains that this had happened to them, and 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 therapists were like convincing people that it was this thing, and it, you know, people just got caught up in this whirlwind of wanting to accuse people of, um, you know, raping them and, you know, torturing them and killing people and, you know, raping and torturing and killing and eating little babies. <laughs> because, you know, so, so many of us actually just crave that. We're like, man, I just want to accuse somebody of pedophilia. And, you know, it's, I mean, they, come on. It's like, that's not something that people just go around just like a hype that doesn't, it doesn't just pop out of nowhere. People, Nobody, no human being wants that to ever be happening to any other human being or to themselves and certainly doesn't want to witness that. I mean, I mean, it's just not, it's not even logical that someone would say that that is a, you know, something that, that was just made up because I, I, I'm sure that, that, you know what, back, back when I first heard about it, before I had experienced anything like that. I, I probably can understand a little bit that um, 
I didn't want to believe that any of those things were happening in the world or don't, I mean, didn't want to, even if I did believe it, I didn't want to hear about it. Just like, ugh, I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about those things. Um, you know, I, I, I like went through like very, um, like quick, I would, you know, most people go through MK Ultra mind control, um, torture and things like that too, that, that, uh, disassociates their personality, makes their brain split into different personalities and stuff, um, through torture, through, uh, uh, hypnosis, through drugs, through, you know, all different kinds of, of things that they, they, they do to, um, split your, your brain apart to con control you. Basically, it's a way to create a human slave. A totally willing robot person <laughs> that will just do what you say and um, has no ability to think for themselves and no desire to just it's it's a it's a really you know horrible thing that that is done. I actually actually asked Simon like not too long ago. I, was, I asked him, um, what are some of the benefits? I'm trying to focus on the positives. I don't want to hate these people and I don't want to resent them. So can you please tell me why do people, these rich, you know, multimillionaire families do this to their own children? They wouldn't do that if there wasn't some benefit that, that the kids get from it. I mean, nobody's just going to do that for shits and giggles. I mean, it's got to be a reason that, that there's something so great that they're receiving from that that they're choosing to do this to their own children. And you know what? Um, he, I said, why isn't that talked about more, more? Why isn't there more emphasis on the, on what, what you, what are the benefits that you get from it so that I can focus on that and try to love these people so that they don't have any more control over me because, you know, every single time I have a memory of, you know, something, it, it just, it, I get that little twinge of like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> you know that that sucks and I don't want to feel that way I don't want to have any more I don't want them to like you know dine anymore at my buffet of um you know I, my emotional buffet that they've been just <clears throat> totally gorging themselves out for so long of like my pain and my my fear and my you know, all the things that they have just kept me like going around in circles. And, um, so I, I anyway, I, I'm not going to really get into the details of my situation that much just to, to know that it was an MK ultra situation. And, um, one of the worst parts of it for me was I think that when they're done with you or when your programming starts to break down, which mine did, I think fairly quickly because it was done so haphazardly and, I was done to me as an adult and, um, it, 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 uh, it started to break down. My programming started to break down, but what happens is they put these, um, trap, trap doors. I don't know what we call a trap door, like a booby trap. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> a booby trap in place in your head often. I'm not saying every time, but often that will, um, go off so that you will be silenced that you will, you'll just end your own life. It's called a suicide program. So every day I would wake up and, um, I would literally say to myself out loud throughout the day, you should just die. You should just kill yourself. And I would say it out loud and I would think it, and I would just want to tear my own face off. And, um, it was really that was one of the hardest years of my entire life because it was just, I mean, I had a moment where I had like, I got up to my head and my mouth was telling me, do it, do it, you know, do it, shoot your, and it was, I had to like, it was like arguing with myself because you have these other parts of yourself that are, you know, they're unaware of each other. And so, um, it just, it, it's, it, it was really, really hard. And I was really, I didn't know what else, I didn't know what to do. And I had gone the professional route. I had gone to therapists and I had gone to, um, you know, 
I'd gone to the, the, the church, my local church that my family is involved in, and I'd had blessings. And um, then I, what happened to me is I, I uh, experienced an eight hour ordeal that was to me was like, I was taken over by a demon and it was like eight hour just battle. I mean, just like physical, I tore an entire wooden headboard to shreds with like my bare hands somehow. I don't remember that, but somewhere in that, um, you know, time period when I was alone going through this, like someone walked in and they're like, what the fuck happened in here? Because it's the room, all the bedroom furniture was just in pieces. Um, and I think, okay. So, okay. So now all that said, that's like my precursor to what I actually wanted to say. Um, and please understand that people that go through these things, like actually go through them. If you're talking about them and we seem like callous or we seem cold or detached, we are, <laughs> we are, I guess that's one of the benefits you do get from, from going through it is like, you have to ask yourself, how much does the body and mind have to go through before fear is no longer a factor? And we're very used to not being believed. We're, you're, we're used to people thinking we're just crazy and dismissing everything we say. And so, you know, and there's just really not a lot of, it's just, this is what happened. This is what goes on. And those of you out there who have been through this, you'll understand what I'm saying. You'll know. Because you do get like that. You just... You know, we, we'd be talking about something so horrific, but it's just, I don't know. Anyway, so if anyone is there sitting there thinking that I don't sound, um, I guess I didn't really get into any of the details of the tortures and things that were actually done to me, but they're, they're right up there. You know, they're pretty bad. I'm sure that there was many people have gone through worse and. You know, I'm not trying to say that, you know, oh, poor me or anything. I don't need anybody's pity and, I, you know, I don't, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> but, okay, what I wanted to say is all these comments were coming in about Simon and him not having the licenses or the credentials to be helping people like me. And, um... That does bother me. <laughs> that does strike an emotional chord in me because when I was dealing with these other people, the psychiatry people, or the people who were in re the religious people, who were the people you go to when you get possessed by a demon, <laughs> you know, when you have something like that happen, you think you're going crazy. You think that your Satan's after you. I mean, there's like those are the logical trains of thought that you're, you know, that we're our brains would go to because that's how society has you know told us those that's where you go and i understand that's what what your inclination is you, these people need help from actually people that god has ordained or that the you know the ac academia you know ac academic world has ordained are capable of taking care of it and maybe simon parks doesn't have um a degree in, <laughs> you know, demonic possession. <laughs> um, and maybe he doesn't have a, a degree in MK Ultra mind, you know, maybe he doesn't have, have those things. But there isn't one. <laughs> you tell me what college you can go to and say, I'd like to major in exorcism. I'd like to major in gin removal. I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to get a doctorate in, um, you know, deprogramming people from, from <laughs> these government mind control programs is that where, you know, what courses do I enroll in for that? Go to any university and they will just laugh at you because nobody teaches that. Not only do they not have its own little portion of, of a psychiatry or whatever that focuses on those things. They don't even teach a little class about it in any of the, the I mean, I, I don't know. I've never been to school for psychiatry, but I, the, what I know of it, it's 
what I was told when I went to see those people is that you're sick, those things didn't happen to you, and you need medication. And so I complied, and I got on medication, and I still <laughs> wanted to die every day, and it just, it really makes me sad that, um, you know, people are out saying, how did he help you? How did Simon help you? Well, the number one thing that Simon did for me was he believed me. If, if you, just that alone, <laughs> I would have paid uh, 10 times whatever he was charging just to have somebody listen to me and believe me. That's all. <laughs> Anybody who is having these memories or who has been through these things or or who doesn't know what to do and is scared and is being attacked, you know, psychically or emotionally or physically, all we want is somebody to believe us. Like, that's like, it's, <laughs> he did a lot more for me than that. But I'm going to say that was the very first thing that he did is he believed in me and he believed what I was saying. And he said, you're not crazy. These things did happen to you. And then he told me he could help me. And then he did. <laughs> you know, he, he, what he did was not complicated. It, and it, it didn't require a college degree. It required the abilities that Simon Parks has. The, the, it was a very simple process. But within just two Skypes with him, he had turned off that constant longing and just uh instruction i was giving myself over and over and over again to hurt myself or end my own life that is <laughs> that was like the biggest gift ever anyway i'm sorry i'm calling like a little girl but <laughs> I, I will tell you right now that's what simon parks did for me um and then from there, he continued to uh, to help me and to help me with my, you know, my my uh, deprogramming and and help me to move forward. And it's just, I don't know. It just it, it makes me angry that people feel that they can uh, dictate to others whom I we should go to for help. It is none of your fucking business who I go to for help. If he's offering a service and I have money and I would like to purchase that service, it is no one else's business. And and if it doesn't work out for me, well then I lost out on my money and I it but I don't tell you who to go to as a dentist. I don't tell you who, you know, I don't go and look and say, you know, what a shitty gynecologist, uh, Marie, whatever her name is, has. And, and then go and like, you know, go on YouTube and then, and tell everybody that about this shitty gynecologist. And I don't know, you know what I mean? And then make sure that he loses his license. And maybe that's the only person that person feels comfortable with to go to, to have those things. To, I'm just saying that's a really bad, bad example. But you know, I'm just trying to say it's no one's business what anyone does with their body what anybody does with their own mind. What, as long as they're not hurting other individuals, aren't we supposed to be sovereign, free people? At least here in America, we're supposed to be free. <laughs> and I think England is supposed to be like, you know, semi-free. As long as the queen approves, of course. But anyway, I'm just, I'm, I digress. I'm just saying that you people, you may not... I don't think that you, it's not, I don't think it's Simon Parks that you don't believe is telling the truth. It's me you think isn't telling the truth. You don't think there's something wrong with Simon Parks. You think there's something wrong with me and that I'm either lying or that I'm insane. And I'm not lying. And I'm not insane. So, and there's thousands of people like me, thousands of us who need help and there is no one to help us. So, <laughs> you know, you can you can fight all you want. And, you know, it's, it's very apparent who you are, who you who you affiliate yourself with, who 
what your purpose is, what your mission is. Listen to your, your words are just so full of hate. And, you know, you say you feel sorry for me. You know, you can feel sorry for me all you want. Because of Simon, I was able to choose what he told me was. You need to decide what side of the fence you're on. Because I was still, you know, associating with people, letting people control parts of that. Because I was so scared to give that up. And, and I just, and he's like, you need to make a decision. Because I can't, you know, I can't help you if you... If, if you're going to allow that energy into, you know, you got to, you got to choose. And, you know, I just can't even tell you, like, I, what he did was, was like so awesome. And there's not a bunch of people out there that do what we do or do what he does. There just not, isn't. You can research it all day and there's just not a bunch of people out there who have the abilities that Simon Parks does. And it doesn't matter if you guys don't understand him or if you don't think he's telling the truth. I, I went to him and I was, and who cares if he has a piece of paper saying he can do it or not from the government? I don't give a shit. It worked. I am living proof that it worked. And there are a lot of other people like me who, see, I don't have a lot to lose, but there are a lot of people out there that have a lot to lose and... I have stuff to lose too, but I just feel like it's just so brave what Simon has done all these years. And I can't imagine the attacks and the, you know, energetic and verbal and all kinds of just like things that he must have gone through and just kept fighting and, you know, to get the word out to the rest of us. He accepted this a long time ago but I just I feel like I would be such a coward and like so in the wrong having this information about him to share with you guys and to have this other point of view sorry it's not running on my nose I have this other point of view that is so opposed to what these few bad people are saying and I just will tell you, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> you know, I really seriously, like, just want you guys to go watch his stuff, you know? And just realize it's really no one's business to say who people should get help from or if they can get help from whomever they want. You know, it's, no, it's, it's not up to any of us to say. You know, I can get any treatment or any service I want from someone. That's just, it's not your business how I get well or how I do what I do. It's your business to get, you know, get well yourself so that you can jump, you know, jump ahead when the time is there. I don't know, because it's coming. And, you know, it's just the void, the, the, the line is drawing, like, bigger in the sand. And you got to pick a side. So, anyway, I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong, but we are right. <laughs> Our, my side is right. Like, um, sorry, I'm all gross. I was just, I'm still at work sitting in the storage room. But, anyway, I just, I couldn't go another second without saying that because really people need to know all this stuff because <laughs> just it's it's just their last stitch effort to shut him up because he's reaching too many people it's getting to be too big of a headache for them now and this is a crucial time for them to try to re keep in control just remember that they want control of your life and your kids' lives and your husband's lives and your wife's lives and they just want you to die and come back and have another lifetime so they can just feast off of you. Okay, anyway. I digress again. <laughs> okay, so peace and love except for to the bad people.
I don't get send you peace. Well, I send you love, but not peace. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Everyone have some peace and love today. Thank you.